Good morning and a warm welcome to you all to this celebration of the Eucharist for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Welcome to those who are here and to those who are watching at home. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. (laughs) 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of the good deed, someone who was sick and are asked how this man had been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God love? How does God's love uh, abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is our commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord.
Through the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Including the words of the hymns, anthem, and communion motet, the word shepherd comes up 15 times in this service, not even counting the sermon. Well, the fourth Sunday of Easter is like that. It is called Good Shepherd Sunday because every year the gospel reading gives some expression to the metaphor that describes Jesus as a shepherd. Today in sermons all over the world, preachers are meditating on this metaphor, maybe trying out a couple of sheep jokes to break the ice. What do you call dentures made for sheep? Very good, lamb chops. <laughs> How do sheep feel about goats? A bit meh. Nah. <laughs> Last one. I was once a shepherd, but I have no idea how many sheep were in my flock. Every night I tried to count them, I kept falling asleep. <laughs> sheep seem to be innately funny creatures. Just the sound they make can be comical. To my ear, it's uncanny. They often produce a noise that sounds not so much like the sound of a sheep as like a human being doing an impression of a sheep. But let's turn our attention to what shepherds do what actual shepherds literally do and have done for untold thousands of years. It's so easy for us to think of slightly soppy ideas of shepherding and imagine it to be an idyllic life that mainly involves lounging around on pretty hillsides, carrying a shepherd's crook as a kind of prop or symbol, but not having to do a whole lot with it. By contrast, of course, Shepherding in real life is hard work, involving exposure to the elements, driving rain or sleet or whatever, involving danger in some cases, demanding tough decisions, sometimes heartbreaking ones, demanding patience, perseverance, physical stamina, and humility because some of what a shepherd has to do can be messy and unglamorous. The most recent encounter Sean and I had with a very large number of sheep was the summer before last on vacation in the Northwest Highlands of Scotland where we go pretty much every year. We had to get away to the side of the path that we were walking on to let them pass. There must have been well over 200 sheep in the flock 
and the shepherds were in the process of getting them from one place to another. To me, the most interesting thing to see was that there was no shepherd in front of them. The shepherds were behind them, bringing up the rear, complete with their shepherd crooks and some sheepdogs who knew their job was not to hurt the sheep, but to be a compelling presence that kept them moving forward. Of course, almost all of our familiar images of shepherding work the other way around. They are images of the shepherd whom the sheep follow, the shepherd who leads from the front. But both these ways of tending sheep, I think, are relevant, not only to leadership in general, but to the way we ourselves experience the shepherding, the guidance of God. I gather that there is, in some circles, a technical distinction between a shepherd who leads from the front and a sheep herder who, lead, who drives from behind, but we can save that fine point for some other occasion. Let's just think for a moment about leadership from behind. In his book, Long Walk to Freedom, Nelson Mandela wrote, it is better to lead from behind and put others in front, especially when you celebrate victory when nice things occur. That reminds me of one of the best, most successful leaders of an organization I have ever worked under myself. Let's call him Mr. Smith, because actually that was his name, Mr. Smith. <laughs> He was being interviewed, and the questioning turned to the topic of leadership. His idea of leadership was similar to Nelson Mandela's, especially with regard to celebrating successes when good things happen. Mr. Smith didn't go in for leading like a celebrity who draws the spotlight to himself. He said, I like to think that you lead from behind. You create conditions, and you pull people together, and you make everyone feel they are celebrities. You don't overshadow your team. I don't think it's too great a stretch to say that in a small way, that reflects a little of the humble leadership shown by Jesus, the leader who washed his disciples' feet. As for making everyone feel like a celebrity, well, I don't think celebrity is the right word, but the life of Jesus on this earth and his death on the cross for each one of us is certainly an assurance of how special we all are to God. And that's a whole lot better than being a celebrity anyway. In today's gospel, Jesus says of us, his sheep, I know my own and my own know me. The connection is personal. We are known, treasured, and valued, every one of us. The idea of leadership from behind, if we keep thinking for a moment of shepherding in these terms, it has another dimension to it as well. Sometimes we sense God's shepherding not so much as if the shepherd is the person up ahead whom we follow, but more like the shepherd who propels us from behind, sometimes moving us along a path in a direction we may not particularly want to go. I think I have mentioned before a scene that is embroidered in the Bayeux tapestry telling the story of the Norman Conquest. The scene shows a bishop taking part in a battle, Bishop Odo. He was a half-brother of William the Conqueror. The bishop is brandishing a club over one of his soldiers, urging him to go forward towards the fight. The caption on the tapestry says, here is Bishop Odo comforting his troops. The word comfort 
has a double edge to it. The word is connected with the idea of giving someone strength or courage. So part of Bishop Odo comforting his troops has to do with encouraging them in what must have been a most unwelcome way. Prodding them forward where they would not have chosen to go. Like sheep who have a shepherd bringing up the rear and a few sheep dogs, making sure the sheep get to good pasture, to some different field, or back to their pen, whether that's what they particularly want to do or not. That isn't a very comfortable image of God's shepherding, especially considering the sheep nearest to the back of the flock, with those dogs walking right behind them with lowered heads. But being guided by God is not always comfortable. To have the Lord as our shepherd is not to be a woolly lamb held in the arms of Jesus all the time. Sometimes it is to be propelled along a path we may not have wanted or wouldn't have chosen for ourselves. Yet looking back afterwards, it seems to me we often seem to find that going down such a path turned out to be an amazing way in which God helped us grow. So the Lord's guiding influence can be felt in both ways, as the gentle, encouraging guide who walks ahead of us, and as the unsettling prodder behind us. But in both cases, the shepherd knows us and loves us, and the shepherd is good. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace that comes from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Lawrence, our bishop, Geraldine, our assistant bishop, and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, for their leaders and all in authority, that they may work for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town and its surrounding communities, 
for our neighbors and friends, our families and loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to care for it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are in special need at this time, among them Anne, Carlos, Bruce, Shirley, Marie, Priscilla, Bobby, Andy, Hank, Chris, Margaret, Don, Carol, and the Corley family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for all whose lives are torn by war, especially in Ukraine and the Holy Land, for prisoners and captives, and all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dying and those who mourn, for those who have recently died, and all the departed whom we entrust to God's care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to God. To you, O Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. saying together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Just on my own behalf, and I'm sure on behalf of all of you, I'd just like to say how much I'm enjoying learning to sing Michael Hagler's new setting of the Mass, which we've had these last two Sundays. I think we're really starting to get the hang of it. We have coffee hour immediately following the service over in the parish hall. Please come along and join us if you can. Now the annual appeal for Episcopal Ministries of Long Island is on right now. Um, details are on page 11 of your service bulletin. You can donate either online or by sending a check to the diocese. Um, there are envelopes like this on the welcome table at the back of church to make it easy. Now, that's 
a bit thin when it comes to announcements, so there are other things to announce. Susan. Thank you very much, Susan. And speaking of the Life Enrichment Center, um, Susan mentioned um, Laura Doherty, who is um, in Florida, and she's actually been quite ill for the past couple of weeks. And although I think we didn't quite, unless I missed it, I, I think we didn't get her, her name onto the list of those who are sick. So please hold Laura in your prayers as well. She said that she is feeling better, and she hopes to be back. I think, Susan, she said on in early May, May the 11th or something like that. So, any other announcements? Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in all goodness to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.